Papa, written by Jack T. Chick. Stand by for breaking news. We are taking you live to the Vatican. The Holy Father is dead. According to the Holy See, His Holiness died at 310 this morning. The world is stunned and will mourn this most godly of men. Presidents, kings, and dictators will soon arrive from all over the world to pay their final respects to His Holiness. Hey, why do they call this guy His Holiness? Because he's the Pope, Jimmy. The Pope. What's a Pope? He's the world's most holy man. He's loved by over a billion Christians. Because he's God's representative on earth. Wow, can I read about him in the Bible? Careful, Jimmy. Only the Catechism reveals the glory of His Holiness. The Bible will only confuse you. Really? I didn't know all this. I'm not a Catholic. Then you can't understand. I looked into his eyes once. It was like looking at the face of God. And now, he's dead. How awesome. If the Pope's that important, maybe I should talk to your priest. Father Flanagan? No, you stay away from him. Why, Uncle Frank? He's been, he's been arrested. Something about altar boys. That's too bad. Well, I've got to go now. Bye, Uncle Frank. If the Pope is the holiest man on earth, why isn't everybody Catholic? Is there something I don't know? Hello, Mr. Powell. What do you think about the Pope dying this morning? You mean Caesar? That's not what I said. Hey, they're the same thing. What's Caesar got to do with the Pope? Same guys, different costumes. It's all a big show, Jimmy. Been going on for 2,000 years. When the Caesars ruled the world, their seat of power was in Rome. It's true. I am God. Absolute power corrupts absolutely. The Caesars saw themselves as gods, but really, they were only puppets in the hands of Satan. It was during the reign of Caesar Augustus that Jesus Christ left heaven to be born on earth. God took the form of flesh. Wait, Jesus is God? Absolutely. Then why did he leave heaven? Because everybody's hiding something were selfish, sinful brats in the eyes of God, and God won't allow sin into heaven. Jesus came to fix all that, but death is the price of sin, so fixing it cost him his life. He shed his blood to wash away our sins so we could get to heaven. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. He died. On the third day he rose from the dead. The price for our sin was paid in full. This ruined Satan's show. Many of his people were leaving him and getting saved by faith in Christ. You traitors! I'll kill every one of you! And he commanded his Caesars to slaughter the Christians. On a hill in Rome was an arena called the Circus, where Christians were butchered to please Caesar Nero. In its center was a huge Egyptian obelisk, which marked the future location for Satan's office on earth. That hill was called Vaticanus. But years later, when Rome was in ruins and the Caesars were gone, the only obelisk left standing was the one on Vaticanus Hill. So in the place where Satan enjoyed his bloody sacrifices, he created his own form of Christianity. His new religion brought back his Caesars, but with new titles. Now he was called the Pope. Ta-da! Introducing Papa! And on that same site, he would build a magnificent Roman temple and call it the Vatican. Satan pulled it off. Today, Rome is still the seat of world power. She controls the UN, governments, and the world's finances. Her power is no longer blocked by Protestantism. It's all but gone. Once again, all roads lead to Rome. Catholicism controls its members from cradle to the grave. We hold upon this earth the place of God Almighty. The popes love having so much power. But, just, but does Jesus like it? Let's find out. Little Anthony is born into a lovely old Catholic family. Get him baptized before he dies or he'll go into limbo. Yes, Father. Now begins his journey as a faithful Catholic hoping for heaven. Step 1. Anthony is baptized. He's now a member of the Roman system. You've just been born again. This is not what God said. How can a baby understand what's going on? Anthony learns to love and fear his priest, Father O'Toole, who claims to be a divine man, equal to Jesus, and the Holy Ghost, more powerful than the Blessed Virgin Mary. Look what he can do. 
Since Father O'Toole is inferior to God, but superior to man, let's watch him pull off his magical mass. Now, it's only bread, but watch what happens next. Note, the mass isn't in the Bible. Jesus, hoc est enum corpus meum. When O'Toole pronounces the words of consecration, the incarnate word, Jesus, has obliged himself to obey, and down he comes. They claim turning a wafer into Jesus takes as much power as the creation of the world. The words of the priest create Jesus. This becomes a way for God to be adored. Satan created this blasphemy. Step 2. First Communion. Today, Anthony will eat his God. He must believe the wafer contains the body, soul, and divinity of Christ. But what if he doesn't? He will be cast into hell forever. Step 3. Confirmation. Anthony is sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Or is it some other visitor? Confirmation is said to bind a child into the church. In their own words, he is in bondage. Step 4. Confession. Anthony must confess regularly to Father O'Toole instead of God to get rid of his sins. Tell me, if O'Toole pardons Anthony, God himself is obliged to abide by the judgment of his priests. Step 5. Holy Orders or Matrimony. Anthony ignored both of these. In step six, last rites, Anthony's life is ending. Before he dies, he must receive the last sacrament, anointing of the sick. Anthony deeply desires to be in heaven with the Blessed Virgin, but to get there involves many works, prayers, and giving to the Mother Church. Confession every few weeks, I have sinned. He never misses the Eucharist. Hail Mary, full of grace, he prays the rosary daily, he even prays to the saints. But Jesus is left in the background. Anthony's life is almost over. As a faithful Roman Catholic, what can he look forward to? After all the religious hoops Anthony jumps through, do you know which one Satan loves most? Purgatory. What's purgatory? A religious scam. They teach that Catholics must still pay for their sins when they die. They must be burned off before God will let them into heaven. You mean even good Catholics burn? Oh yes, St. Augustine said that fire will be more grievous than anything a man is capable of bearing in this life. That's all they look forward to? They believe there's only one way out. Someone must pay a priest to say enough masses to set them free. It's like religious kidnapping, and purgatory is their money tree. That isn't right. How long do they stay there? Forever. Forever? How can this be? Because Anthony is not in purgatory, he's in hell. Purgatory is the worst double cross that Satan ever invented. Precious Catholics do religious works all their life, only to end up in hell. But Jesus said, This is the work of God, that ye believe on him who he hath sent. That's it? It's so easy. Purgatory does not exist. Catholicism does not care about your soul, just your money. But Jesus paid for all your sins. For Christ also hath suffered, hath once suffered for sins, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God. Then Jesus rose from the dead and returned to heaven. These things have I written, that ye may know that ye have eternal life. I believe you, Jesus, and I know I'm saved. No, that's the sin of presumption. Who are you going to believe, this guy or God? Jesus will destroy the sinful Vatican, but he warns the precious Catholics, Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins. The Lord doesn't want you or your family to be ruined by this monster. Trust Jesus. Will Jesus save me? He'll save anyone who receives him. As many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God. Don't believe the lie of purgatory. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. The Bible says there is only one way to heaven. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me.